Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures Etc. And today what I would like to do for my owl journal is to make one of these little um, waterfall cards. And this is just my little practice piece, um, just to kind of get an idea of, of how it works. And I'm gonna be using some images from this uh, bird book, Birds of North America, to um, cut out some owl images. And then I also have um, some book pages that I'm going to um, ink up with some spray inks. And then I have this, uh, this cute fabric that was tied around some towels that I got at a thrift store recently. And then some of this fabric as well, which is some of the Tim Holtz fabric. I found out where to find it locally, so I just went and got some, and this is my first time using it. And if you choose to use fabric um, in your project, if you decide to follow along, it doesn't have to be Tim Holtz. It can be anything or nothing. Just, you know, it's just something that I wanted to try. So the first thing that I want to do, I'm just going to move some of this stuff out of the way. Oh, I also have, uh, this is some cardboard from a Kleenex container, Kleenex box. And uh, some book page from a Reader's Digest condensed book that I'm turning into a planner. And um, that's what I want to start with first is to ink up some of these pages. Okay, so let's setting some of these things aside so I can just work right on the um, desk here on the pages. So I picked out uh, some pages that had lots of text block, you know, with uh, very few spaces in them, if you, if you kind of understand what I mean. Like, there's not a lot of spaces in here. Um, and I'm going to glue these together. So I'm going to take, let's see, this one and this one, first of all. I'm going to glue these together. And because I, I kind of want double thickness, you can use thicker paper if you choose to, um, but since I have all these book pages and they're just sort of sitting around not doing anything, I thought I would give them a mission, and this is it. So I want to get as much glue on here with the glue stick as possible so I don't end up with air bubbles. Seems like I always end up with air bubbles. <laughs> Frustrating. So it'll, it'll give me some, uh, some substance without being, you know, too bulky in the journal. Okay, I'm just trying to line this up. And then I'm going to use my sprayer. Just to make sure it's adhered really well. Okay, so that's one set. And then I'm going to do the same thing with an other set. Just trying to have as much text block as I can. So, let's see. This will do. Yeah. sure I'm going to need the other one. Oh yes I am. <laughs> I almost forgot what I was doing. Okay I have it all planned out and you know how um, some plans just always don't always work out the way you intend but we're going to give this a try. I've been eyeing these waterfall cards for quite a while and um, I've never made one until I just made that, that little practice one. Well, I made a couple of little practice ones with just some scraps that I have. Okay, so we'll set the glue and the brayer aside. And now I want to uh, spray ink these pages. And I'm just using some spray ink that I have on hand. Some of it will be mica spray. This is the Distress spray. And again, you don't have to uh, use spray ink. You, if you want to ink up book pages, you can just use, you know, your regular Distress ink. Or you can stamp on them if you have some stamps that you like. 
um, this is just how I'm doing it today. So I've got some vintage photo. And one thing about spraying uh, paper like this is that there's a lot of drying time involved. So right now I'm just putting some water on here. So I'm, I'm going to spray and then dry and then spray and then dry. And um, I, I won't do the whole thing on camera, but when I'm done, I will, sh I will show you which colors I use. So since that's kind of a long process and I don't want to bore you with it, I'm going to turn the camera off now and come back when I'm done with that part. Okay, so these are all spray inked now, both front and back, because you will see both the front and back of some of the pieces. And the colors that I used, uh, just in case you wanted to know, are Distress Oxide, Vintage Photo, and Peacock Feathers. And then of the sprays, I used Wild Honey and Antique Linen and uh, Vintage Photo. And then I used a couple of mica stains as well, the Fresh Balsam and the Antique Bronze. Okay, so moving those out of the way. Now, what I want to do next is to cut these down into the pieces that I'm going to use for the mechanism. And I, I'll be using um, this basic size right here. These squares are two by two, and I will end up having um, five of them. There's only four on this one just because it was sort of a practice one that I did. But what I want to want to tell everybody is that you don't really need to be too hung up on the measurements or the sizes that I'm using in this project. Basically what you would want to do is to take the, the size of your image and like take the biggest one and then make your, uh, your squares kind of match that. And so as long as they're all the same size, and they're all evenly spaced. And I think you might even be able to see it a little bit better here. You can see that the spacing between them is all very even. And that's a, a function of the uh, score marks that we put in this, in this long piece here. So there are score marks um, one quarter inch apart for each one. Now, depending on the size of your image and the size of your squares, you just need to make the, the uh, base part of the mechanism about a half inch wider, just so you have a border. And I don't even think that's all that necessary. You can make them all the same size, I guess. But if you want a nice looking border, you just need to make the, the base part about half an inch wider than whatever the width of your square is. And they don't even need to be square. They can be um, rectangular or heart-shaped or something like that, but the main thing is just to have them evenly spaced so that when you, when you pull on the mechanism, they all just kind of come up in the sort of like the same uh, progression, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So like I said, don't get hung up on the size. Just you know, look at your image and then choose your size accordingly. That's why it's, the sizes are just kind of a guideline. Okay, so these are the images that I'm going to be using. Um, and I've already cut them out and inked them. And this is the tag that I'm going to be using. So uh, I'm going to cut these first and score them first. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way and get my scoreboard out, my scoreboard and trimmer. And it doesn't matter which one of these I use first. So I'm just going to cut off the margin around the text block just because then I, I have just all, all text. Um, Okay, and if some of it 
happens to come up like that one did right there, you just take a little little glue stick and glue it back down. Okay. And remember that my um, squares are going to be two inches wide, so I want to cut this at two and a half inches. And now I want to start scoring it. So I'm going to score the first score line at two and a half inches from the top. And I'm using this little scoring thing that I got from the Dollar Tree. I don't know what you call it, scoring stylus. So starting at two and a half inches, and I want to make uh, um, how many score lines do I want to make? I'm going to go every quarter inch until I get to three and a quarter. So I'm at uh, two and a half. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so two and a half. And then two and three quarters. and three and three and a quarter and three and a half and three and three quarters okay and I want to fold all of these and burnish them down which I will do with a bone folder in a minute. Okay, so that's going to work. So we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six score lines, all a quarter inch apart. And if you're doing like a real big one, like for a card or something like that, you might want to make your score lines half an inch apart. It just depends on the size of the project that you're working with. The main thing is that you want them to be evenly spaced. One doesn't seem to be able to be straight. Okay. All right, and then I want to have five uh, two inch by two inch squares. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the rest of this. Let's go this way. <laughs> These will be the individual panels. So I've got four here. I'm going to, in fact, I don't even really want this one because it doesn't have enough inking on it. Set that one aside. And that's why I have this piece. I knew I was going to need more. I'm going to cut off the margin. Then cut it at two inches. And then I'm going to make two more squares. That can be used for another project. Okay, so now I have five squares. So I'm going to move my scoreboard. And I'm going to ink up the edges of these, um, these score lines so that it's easier for me to see where they are 
when I'm gluing the, uh, the panels on. Make sure they're burnished down really well. Okay, I'm just going to take some black ink, and I don't want the uh, the ink to go beyond the width of the panels that are going to be glued on there. So I'm just going to ink them up just kind of in the middle. And again, this is just to help me to, to see when it's laying flat where I'm going to put my panels. I can see them pretty well, but... This is just a little extra insurance. <laughs> there. So I can see those pretty well. And I'm going to also ink around the edges of all of these panels as well. And just for fun, I'm also going to sew around each one of these panels. And I'm going to uh, ink these and then, but I'm going to turn off the camera because, you know, who wants to, who really wants to see me ink? <laughs> and I shall be right back. Okay, so I have sewn basically around everything. All of my little panels and even this little, this part of the mechanism. So now I'm going to start gluing these on. I'm going to use art glitter glue. And um, what I'm going to do is, you know, all the ones that I've seen have had the, the panels directly on top of each other in a nice line. But me being me, I'm going to do it a little bit differently because why not? Because we keep saying there's no rules in, in junk journal land. So I'm not going to follow those rules just going to do it this way just for fun. I'm going to stagger them. Okay, so a thin bead of glue right at the top and I'm going to um, glue this right up to that first score line like that. And then the next one also at the top. These are just getting glued at the top and actually having the stitching around them kind of makes it um, easy to see exactly where to put the glue. <laughs> and this is going up against the next score line, but like I said, I'm, I'm going to stagger it a little bit. Why? Because I can. Because why not? I'm going to stagger this one over here, this way. And certainly, um, I should mention that sewing is always optional. I just happen to like it. And um, if you want to do, you know, sew or uh, glue your little panels on one and you know in line with each other, that's totally fine too. But I thought I would see, you know, how it worked if I did it this way. What's the worst that can happen? Oh, nothing. I can live with that. Okay, so when you start pulling it, they're going to come up like so. So that still works. All right, now um, I'm going to let the glue dry before I do anything else with this. I'm just going to set that aside there. And I'm going to start working on the tag. And I have this book page to cover the... Um, Let's see, I'm going to put my art glitter glue away first because I'm not going to use that for this part. I'm going to cover it with, uh, with this book page so that there's book page on the back. And then this fabric is going to get sewn onto the front. And I will have some writing space on the back as well. Okay, so pull down my trusty parchment paper. 
and get uh, some glue on here. So I learned a couple of things about owls when I was uh, doing this this morning, you know, kind of getting ready. Back up a little bit so you can see a little bit more. I learned that um, owls have twice as many vertebrae in their neck than humans and other birds do. We have seven. Owls have 14, which I thought was really fascinating. And what that enables them to do is turn their head 270 degrees. That's a lot. The reason they need to turn their head 270 degrees is because their eyes don't move inside their head at all. Okay, let's get this on here straight. Also, in a great horned owl, the um, their eyeballs are as they weigh as much as a golf ball if you can believe that. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this little tab here and there. And their eyes aren't round either. They um, are tubular. <laughs> and take up most of the space in their head. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Okay, before I glue that part down, I'm gonna trim it here at the top. Ooh. Sometimes my craft supplies have a mind of their own my table and I want to give it a tag shape and I'm using the lines on my grid or the dots whatever you want to call them so I'm going to go from this mark here down to the uh, the line and cut that off And then I want to do the same thing here on this side. So from that line or that little that little dot down to the line. Oh, I, I guess I should have waited until the glue dried. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all right. This part's going to be covered. And then just trim a little bit off the top. Now I'm going to ink it. And I'm going to use Vintage Photo. Most of the text on this book page won't show. So how many of you grew up with Reader's Digest condensed books? I know I did. My mom uh, would get get them like every month, get one in the mail. Oh, I couldn't wait to read them. That's where I read a lot of my um, my first my first introductions to some of the classics. All right, now I'm going to take this piece of fabric and glue it onto um, the well, this is going to end up being the front, and that's going to be the back. So um, for this, I do want to use glue, and I will use um, fabric tack. We got a tiny bit of snow this morning. It almost melted before it hit the ground. <laughs> but, you know, it was kind of fun to watch. I remember uh, hearing a long time the saying a long time ago the saying big snow little snow little snow big snow and I didn't really know what that meant the first time I heard it until I thought about it and if you think about it big snow in other words big flakes 
usually mean that the snow is heavy so and wet so it will dry it'll it'll melt fast um, but little snow is drier and um, tends to be lighter too so it'll last longer and there will be more of it so big snow little snow little snow big snow has anybody else ever heard that saying okay I'm gonna give this some time for the Fabri-Tac to dry and then I'm gonna sew around it and then I shall be back okay so while the the fabric on the tag is drying I'm gonna go ahead and get my owls uh, glued on figure out which ones I want where and I think this guy needs to be on the top tag yep I like that I'm just gonna use some art glitter glue for this I said tag I meant panel and then the next one it doesn't really matter <laughs> which one is next I think I should have glued these off before I put it all together but I didn't so I'm doing it now but it might have been easier had I glued the uh, the images onto the panels before I glued the panels onto the mechanism. Okay, I officially love these little guys. They kind of look like little specimen cards. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, and then um, I do want to put one of these guys, and I haven't decided which one, probably him, on this bottom piece. But he needs to be able to be seen. So probably about there. And then one or both of these leaves will be my little pull tab. Okay, so we'll put this little owl there to be used in another project or maybe elsewhere in the journal. Okay, we'll let those guys dry. Let's see how the tag is doing. That's pretty good. So I'm going to trim this. Let me get my scissors. I have special fabric scissors. Anybody who sews understands. The only paper my fabric scissors touch is pattern paper. Now you probably guessed it, I'm going to go sew around this. I'll be right back. Okay, so far I'm really liking this. Now I want to position my, um, my little mechanism on the tag to be where I want it to be because I want to use these leaves as the, uh, as the pull. And I want them to fit, you know, so that it'll, they'll fit on the tag itself. So I'm going to sew these leaves on and then come back and position everything and get the whole thing all buttoned down. So I'll be right back. Okay, so this is where I want um, want everything to be situated. This is exactly how I want it to be. So before I do anything else, I'm going to clamp it in place with these funky little plastic clamps that I got at Harbor Freight. Let's see, these clamps are a little premature. Okay, so before I put those on, I'm gonna I'm gonna add the fabric fusion tape to 
this bottom part okay so here's the first panel so it's going to go underneath this panel and this is a double-sided um, tape that works with fabric and that's what I'm going to use to um, to secure the fabric that I'm going to use is wider than the than the tape I'm going to use this fabric most of the most of the tutorials I've seen don't use fabric they use paper but me being me I have to be different so I'm going to use this little piece of fabric so just pull off the whatchamacallit <laughs> the backing if I can get a hold of it there we go okay all right, now I'm going to put the fabric on. Like that. Okay, now the fabric is now going to go around and be glued to the back. So the deal is, is that this part this part needs to move freely but uh, the rest of it needs to be attached to the tag okay so um, that's why I'm using this piece of fabric and I'm going to wrap it around once I get it situated so that there's a little bit of interest on the back as well Okay, and then once it's glued on the back, then it won't move on the front, is my theory. That's my theory. So now I want the, um, the clamps just to kind of hold everything in place. So that I can glue the the fabric to the to the back of the the tag here. So I'm going to use. I wonder if I could just use this stuff. I could, couldn't I? Some fabric tack to glue that little that little section down. The nice thing about the fabric fusion tape is that it um, it doesn't allow like the glue to bleed through. Because that happens sometimes on fabric, right? Okay, so I'll put a little bit on the back here. Now, obviously, this tag is going to be bulkier than most of the tags you put in a journal. But I like having some interactive elements in my journals. And as long as, you know, the whole thing isn't made up of bulky things like this, it's fine. Okay, now I'm just going to get my pinking shears and trim this part off. Like that. I'm going to take the tag, the clamps off, and now... Ta -da! <laughs> Ta -da! Oh, I love it. Okay, that's too much fun. Now on the back, I want to put some writing space. And this little poem says, A wise old owl lived in an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't we be like that bird? And I just thought that was really cool. Put this on. I guess I should have used our glitter glue. But I just grabbed what was in front of me. <laughs> and 
and then some uh, coffee dyed paper and we will just trim it with my ruler do a little tear We have, let's say, two and three quarters. And we will ink around the edges. I'm using Rusty Hinge. that right there for some writing space and that should do it almost I one one more thing I want to do oh, I should have used our glitter glue <laughs> oh well one last thing and that is that this tag needs a topper. So since we have leaves down at the bottom, I wanted to use leaves at the top for a topper. And I'm gonna use my little tiny attacher. There we have it. And it works, yay. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, well, it might get caught on the leaves going back in the other direction. But you lift your fingers up and up it goes. Okay. All right. Well, I think that worked out really well. I hope you liked it. And if you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And um, if you would subscribe, if you haven't already, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure I can. You can see the whole thing. There we go. And um, I'll see you in my next video. And I'm not really sure what video that will be, but I hope you'll join me. And thank you so much for joining me today. So happy crafting, everybody. Let the serendipity find you. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.